Hi, everybody. My name is Tremaine Hemmons. I am an immigration attorney out of Fort Lauderdale, uh, but I represent clients in all 50 states. And I do have clients in Jamaica for um, consular processing as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, B. So guys, for this live, you guys are going to be encouraged to ask immigration-related questions, mostly on family-based immigration cases because that's what she specializes in that's what right. i specialize i specialize mostly in family-based cases but i also deal with uh hey from pembroke pines i also deal with a lot of removal conditions issues as well so if you have somebody who's in immigration court or something i can also help with that right so anyone wants to jump start the questions you can go ahead and so we can start interacting more. Hybrids. No questions. Uno ask for all kind of stuff. I don't know. 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 I don't what if my husband does not work okay cool um i think there's a q and a box that you can actually drop your questions in there because i think if you guys just put it in the comments we're gonna miss some of them but anyways um, oh some some people are asking um yeah so someone what says if what if my husband doesn't work okay if your husband doesn't work that should be okay as long as you can find a co-sponsor Right, so he's still gonna have to submit the I-864 because he's required to do so, but you can have a second person fill out the I-864 and in doing that, they can also, um, they can supplement the fact that he doesn't work. The only caveat is that that person has to be a citizen, a US citizen or a legal permanent resident, okay? What if your spouse is being deployed? That's also cool. Military cases um, are dealt with differently. So you wouldn't have issues with not being able to show cohabitation, meaning that you guys live together because he's getting deployed, right? What I would try to do is whatever forms he needs to sign, have him sign those before he leaves and be sure that um, it is explained that he's um, in the military. All right, another question that I saw in the question box was, um what if i came here at age five and the person who brought me here ran off with let me add the rest um run off with what i don't see the rest so if she came here at age five and the person that she that brought her maybe left her with somebody else so yeah ah uh, see no that that's a, that's an issue that i see a lot right so a lot of times people run off up here with children when they're minors and then they either file the wrong thing or don't file anything at all. And then the, when, once the kid becomes 18, it becomes an issue. The thing is that um, somebody about cutting question gone, Grace. No, no, I <laughs> right. But let me answer this one. So um, the issue is this: uh, when you come as a minor, you don't accrue what's called unlawful presence until you become 18 years old. When you become 18 years old, now it's an issue because you're accruing unlawful presence, meaning that you have violated your time in the U.S., right? So mm -hmm. you're going to have to probably do consular processing if you have someone that can file for you. Or, of course, as usual, if you get married to a U.S. citizen, that waives the, um, the, the, the issue of the violation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. another question that I see right here, what's the purpose of a lawyer for a second interview? For if you have a second interview, sis, then you better get a lawyer. <laughs> You're getting a second interview. <laughs> that means that something never go right to the first <laughs> never right the first time. So then pick up so, something I need to come back. Come uh, back yeah, back. yeah. If, and yeah. usually when that happens, because what people don't realize is when you get uh, on the spot approvals, even though I love them myself, those are my favorite, that doesn't mean that they're finished um, looking at your case. So if you've ever been to USCIS in that situation, you probably heard them say, yeah, you know, we just have to do a little background check to see. What they're doing is going through your um, your consulate application for your visa, for example. So if you go tell the people them say you did have a common law husband in Jamaica, and they didn't pick that up until after your first interview, they're gonna be calling you back. So you bring the attorney. Don't ask why, just bring the lawyer because you might need them to advocate on your behalf 
if they find some ground of inadmissibility, there may be something that the lawyer is going to have to argue against them making a decision or um, trying to find you some other avenue so you can still adjust. So don't knock us, honey. You might need her or him or whoever. <laughs> right. So the another question is, if a visa is canceled, can the person get married and be filed for? Yes. Yes. You can still be filed for even if your visa was canceled, depending on the reason it was canceled. That's the next thing I have to warn you guys. These are just general questions. Every case is different and everybody's circumstance is different. So let's say yours was um, canceled because you came to work or like they didn't catch you working, but they suspect that you're going to work. That would be an easier thing to get waived than someone who was trying to bring drugs up in here or something like that. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, so it yeah, yeah, it's different. Case. It's different. It's very mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, another question. Can a person who is married and is being petitioned for allowed to put their parents on the file in? No. So the answer is no for that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Apart from marriage, what other route is there for citizenship? Um, paths to citizenship are a little finicky in this country. When I do consultations, I usually tell people that U.S. immigration requires some kind of anchor for you to be able to get a path to citizenship here. There are humanitarian bases such as asylum that is a path to, up to citizenship. So if you're scared of remaining in your country for whatever reason, you might be able to obtain asylum. Um, if you arrive at a- I noticed a lot border. of Jamaicans are doing that right now, the asylum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot more consultations for that as well. So mm. just just please understand that asylums are very difficult to prove and they will put you in immigration court to do that. So uh, be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Once, you, once you get denied at USCIS, they automatically refer you to court, which could be good from an immigration lawyer standpoint. We think that's great because you get a second chance to advocate for your case. But if you know you're not gay, you're going to tell the people them, say you're gay, I forgot to lie two times. So good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so another question if someone get married why does immigration give you a hard time if you have no kids so what do you mean if you have no kids together right. right well the thing is they might not have given you a hard time because you don't have kids you may just have not provided enough bona fide evidence to support the marriage right mm -hmm. especially if it's a very young marriage um, you're going to need to show a lot of proof to show that this is actually a real marriage. The thing is, when we when um, I go with clients to these interviews, I try to warn them that these they don't really care about you. They don't know you, okay? They see you. Your life is a piece of paper to them. So mm -hmm. you can't really take offense. Just look at it from their perspective. Okay, if someone who absolutely doesn't know you needs to know that you are actually married to the person you say you're married what evidence would you want to show that person? So you just have to look at it like that. Look at it objectively. Right. Okay. So another question is, how long is the process of trying to bring your partner from Jamaica? Do we have to be married? Yes. Yeah. You have to be married. But um, there's other processes you could look at, like, for instance, a fiancé visa, which that has separate requirements where you can bring your fiancé here get married within 90 days and then file the adjustment application once they are here. So there's a few different ways to do it, but that one's a little more technical. So I'd need a little more information. All right. Let me see where I was at now. Jesus, my last, my last <laughs> oh, well, you <laughs> oh, before I, we continue, I what I should do first yeah. is give you guys my contact information. Mm -hmm, so if you ahead. want to schedule a consultation for your case, you can call me at 754-301-8744 or email us at info at I should probably like, you know how on Instagram you can pin a comment? Can we do that, Grace? Hmm? Can we do it? Yeah, we can pin the comments here. So Let me write that in. Write it in the question and more we'll chat pin it. Ah, I like that better. Okay. Mm. One sec, guys. What you your watch question? Mm. You see it. <laughs> But I'm starting from the bottom. Can we do some of them already? Okay. And I'll pin yours to the top. The next question that we'll be answering is, I think I answered Brick's question already. Um, Which one? Area says evidence is sending. Did my interview in July, they asked for more evidence and we're sending ed evidence. And don't hear from them all now. Yes, sir, from July? Wouldn't you say? Yes. 
July last the year? evidence from July. So I'm almost last year, almost a year now. Maybe they yeah. Have to do. Um, you can submit an, a case inquiry because that shouldn't take more than 60 days for them to um, give you a decision on that, um, 60 to 90 days. So I suggest that you do an online inquiry. Just Google USCIS case inquiry. There will be like a little online form for you to put in your information so you can put in a formal inquiry to ask them what the hell. And um, you can also call the 1-800 number and try to get information that way. Okay. As for me, I sue when people don't do what they're supposed to do. I, I love suing the federal government, the U.S. government, so that's what I do. That's me. I, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> Why not get some free money? Exactly. I'm beat up my lip. Right. Mm -hmm. um, can you travel with the renewal green card letter? Can you travel with the renewal green card letter? What do you mean? Uh, well, I know you can travel. If you're talking about the extension of status when you file for removal of conditions, then yes. You just have to get a stamp in your passport that shows that you are still allowed to travel. Not sure if that was your what you're getting at, but yes, in that situation. Okay, so another question is, what if my wife doesn't come to the second interview? Uh, okay, so that sounds like another removal of conditions issue. If you know your spouse is not going to come to the interview, you need to speak with a lawyer as soon as possible because you're going to have to file for a waiver of their presence at the interview. If it's already been scheduled, then you need to call somebody like Scott. Can your parent be added to your filing like a child? No. Steps to file for my mother, seven years citizen. Oh, so I'm assuming you've been a citizen for seven years. Mm -hmm. If your mom is outside of the U.S. and you are over 21, then you can file the I-130 on her behalf. After that's approved, then you're going to be able to file... Um, to start the consular processing process for her. If she's in the United States, you should be able to get her adjusted because she's considered an immediate relative. All right. How can I help my husband? He was married. I'm not sure. Maybe he was married prior to somebody else. I know she's going to be the second wife. We married to get papers. Maybe I'm I mean, Right. It depends on what you're saying because if you follow me, you know me always a harp on the marriage fraud situation. Right. That, so can, that can cause serious problems. So you can't help him if they found that he um was uh, married before. Marriage for fraud before. Mm -hmm. If they caught him the first time, he dead in the water, babe. There's nothing you can do for him. Sorry. Sorry. But if that's not the case, if he's just been married before, then that shouldn't be a problem if you provide the proper evidence the second time. So do you assist with on filing for nephew? On filing for nephew? That's not possible, babes. Okay. That's not um, a preference category. So this is from unless, the same oh, girl unless that you, got married. Unless you adopted your nephew. Mm. Yeah. So this is from the same girl that was saying she was, uh, she married, her husband was married before. We got okay. married and I wanted to help start him out. Right, but what, what what was this the state of the marriage before? The previous marriage, right. So yeah. you'd probably have to um message her directly and then yeah. she'll you're gonna get have to a do... consultation with her directly for that one. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like we're gonna need a little more um info. Info. Yeah. All right. Um what proof do we need for marriage? That's a broad question. Um some of my big heavy hitters are affidavits from family and friends don't have nobody to tell lie for you this is a federal case okay and it stays on your immigration record so if the person don't know someone married do not have them write an affidavit don't have them write any sworn statements but um those are my favorites so if you have um family members and close friends who do know about the relationship okay someone says they didn't get the number 754-301-8744 um, if you have family members who know about the relationship, have them write detailed letters saying when they met you guys, how they know about the relationship, what what they have done with you guys. If you have pictures with that person, you can include that as well. Me love pictures. I don't like selfies. Selfies are useless. Now, when I talk about this type of stuff, I am talking from experience. In law school, I worked right, my in lawyer ICE. told me the same thing. Like, a picture with you and your husband alone at the beach. That's not doing cold. nothing, babe. You need and pictures with family members. With family members. Uh, right, as if right, they're right, special right. moments. That exactly. 
Um, I worked in the fraud unit at ICE when I was in law school, and th th that will cause the red flags to go up like this. I saw pictures of people in bed naked with them husband, them never business, because why I show people that? Like, <laughs> don't That's expect that normal people would be doing that. So pictures, um, stuff that shows commingling of assets, more serious evidence like um, joint bank account, but not just the dry bank account. Do you guys actually use the bank account? Run the bills through it. Uh, Zelle transactions, Western That's Union it. transaction, cash app transaction from the petitioner to the beneficiary, not from the beneficiary to the petitioner. They're going to ask questions if there are Zelle transactions coming from the, the non-citizen because they're going to look like you're paying them for papers. You don't want that. Um, other good evidence that I love, life insurance policies, health insurance, joint tax returns, like big stuff. Like if we never married to this person, me would want to give them half a million dollars if me dead. You feel me? Mm. So that's really big, big um, thick evidence that you can use. There's other stuff that we use as well. Hi, husband from the back. <laughs> he says hi. He, he says hey. Um, can I file for a hobby in USA and mom in JA at once? Yes, Who's you can. Mom? Your mom or your husband, mother? <laughs> you can file for your mother and your spouse at the same time. The only issue is that you, you're going to have to show that your income is going to be, um, have the capacity to support both applications. That's the only thing. I am 20, by the way. Do I need to wait? Yeah. For your mom, you'll have to wait till you're 21. Mm -hmm. How long is sibling to sibling process? Girl, <laughs> long, long, like a good 10 to 14 years. Like it takes oh my. But when, when people ask me that question, I'm always careful because that usually discourages people. What you want to do is file the application. Don't wait till 10 years down the line to decide, you know what, if I have no other option, so I'm going to file it. Now. Right, just file, file it, it and let it run. It time, I'm go by. File just it and let it run. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. All right, can I... Let read that already. Let read that already. Um, I am in... U in I What? If you're in the USA, can you get a fiancé? Uh, a fiancé visa? We need more, baby. Uh, visa, uh, yeah, visa. Um, If you're in the USA, can you get it? Okay, I'm assuming that you are the fiancé. If you're saying that you, the fiancé, and the U.S. citizen are in the U.S., why would you want a fiancé visa? Just file for adjustment, you know? All right, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, but check, always check if you're eligible for these benefits before you file for them. They usually have all the eligibility requirements in the instructions, or for the love of God, just contact an attorney. Pay the little hundred dollar and make me tell you if you're eligible first, and then you can go do what you can do. Right. Um. Somebody asked if they come to the USA illegally. What does that mean? If they uh, can coming, marry them if they come to the USA illegally. Coming illegally usually means that you're coming through the border without inspection. So that's what people mean when they say coming illegally. Mm -hmm. Um. That's not usually generally the case for us Jamaicans. We are plain people. So we usually have uh, authorized um, entry into the U.S. But if you did come through the border, you will not be eligible for adjustment of status. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there's other ways you can do things. That just means you're going to have to um, seek admission, proper admission. In another way, there are waivers for certain things. So definitely contact an attorney to speak about that. Right. Somebody is saying, I-130 approval can be phone. Is it an issue? Uh, there's this thing that a lot of people don't know about that I'm realizing. There's this thing called a FOIA that you can request from the U.S. government. It's F-O-I-A. Um, they, they keep a very exhaustive file on you when you file things with the U.S. government, and you can request that record for free. Hear that? Let me turn right that one they don't. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can Google it. I think you can do it online now. You can actually request a record online. So just go request a copy of your I-130. It's there. All right. Can you get legal status if they came here illegally? I yes, as, I was, about that as I was saying, yeah, that, that one's a little more sticky. It's not going to be as straightforward as someone who had a lawful entry into the country. And you actually are more likely to be placed in immigration proceedings if they catch you. So be careful. Right. Why yeah, do they... It's more complicated. You have to speak with a lawyer about that. Mm -hmm. Why do they say um, waiting next milestone green card? What? I don't know. I don't understand this one. Mm -hmm. 
So next, sorry, we have to move on to our next question. I'm coming to understand now. <laughs> what, what does two years home re- residency rule mean? To, okay, so that sounds like a J visa issue, right? So usually when you get a J visa, if it was sponsored by the government or your country, they are going to require that you return home for two years before you can adjust your status or um, do, change your status from J. Um, some J visas do not have that requirement on them for the ones that do. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. I remember when I had my J1 visa and I came, um, I think in 2017, and all my other friends that had J1 visas, these were people from Kazakhstan and some other parts of Europe. They were gonna stay here and um get married and stuff so they had a lawyer that they were using at the time and they all sent their pictures of their visa to check if they had the note on it to say if they can travel or not i had that on my visa my j1 visa so i couldn't get married on that visa or mother of a stay in jamaica for two years exactly so i'm saying all right you know what? may i go come here i mean i really need this visa so anyway <laughs> But here's the thing. Yeah. What a lot of people don't know, there's two ways around that. Mm-hmm. You could have either asked for a no objection letter from the consulate here, or you can file for a waiver of the two year requirement to, to, to allow you to stay. Oh, I didn't know that. And the person <laughs> the, that looked on the visa, they didn't know it either. Cause they never tell me. They never say, <laughs> I don't recommend you staying on this visa. Right. And right, so right. me know me the other visa, Mr. All right, I'm put on. Oh, this. well, yeah. I would yeah. have told you the same thing because it would have been very expensive. If I, yeah. Right. Because so I had the B visa, and the J, just... just go on and come back. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Which one we reach now? I like them questions there, though. Me too. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right, next question is uh, asking for a friend. Can you travel with I-512L? Asking for a friend. Hold on. Um, okay. We have to Google so that one what, No, because there's two different types of advanced parole. Yeah. Um, you should be able to but I never advise people to travel on their advance parole document because, again, when you're coming at a port of entry or when you're at a U.S. consulate, you are not guaranteed legal counsel. When you leave the country and you have an adjustment application pending or you don't have a lawful entry, if you get up a CBP officer that don't like your girl, me cannot help you when you reach the consulate and when you reach the border. Right, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to travel when you're um, doing an adjustment application, or if you don't have an authorized entry into the country. Some people have TPS, and that's how they travel outside of the country. And some people, like if you understand, if it's an emergency and you have to travel, that's what it's created for. It is not created for you to go on an Elsha beach, go sit down with your cousin them. Like that's not what it's for. For emergency purposes only. So yes, you can travel on it, but I do not suggest doing it unless it's absolutely necessary. So emergency cases would be like for a funeral or something. Yeah, if somebody dead, mm-hmm. or if your mother sick or something like. For no funeral no celebration, no party, no. Yeah, song, no. None of that. Yeah, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> somebody say, "Hello, me, you're not over hell, Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mom has a son that's not a citizen. Can he come too? Okay, you, you guys are going to have to give us a little more... Background, yeah. Background. We, well, yeah. Do you assist with adoption of nephews? He's now nine. I personally don't do adoption cases in Jamaica. They're too much of a headache, but I would be happy to refer you to somebody else. So shoot me an email and I'll help you with that. What if your parent brought you here and no papers? Okay, we discussed that one before. Um... You might run into some unlawful presence issues. You might have to do consular processing. But if you get married to a U.S. citizen, it should take care of that that issue. If you come on a J-1 and choose to stay to get help. Stay to get help in terms of what? Are you saying that you are scared to go back to your country? In that case, you might want to ask for a waiver or um, seek asylum. Can you get... Ma- oh, this is the same person. If you stay on a J-1 and choose to stay to get help, can you get married and get your papers? 
Yes, you have to ask for a waiver of the J of the of the two year requirement if yours require that you go home. All right. Can I change my maiden name to my married name? If you want to change your na your maiden name to um to your married name, a lot of people don't realize that that's a legal thing you have to do. You have to get it legally changed, and then you can you, you can change it on your application. But when it comes to your citizenship application, when you get to that stage, they're going to tell you that you have to get it changed in court. So I would do that first. That's what I generally recommend people do: change it in court, change it on your driver's license, and change it on your passports and stuff as well. But how are you going to change it on your driver's license if you don't have? um anything to prove right so what you can do like again that's what i was saying you can change it um in court first oh okay. right once you have it changed in court you can get to change across the board on everything on your social security not card your mm -hmm. driver's license mm -hmm. accounts your passports everything mm -hmm. okay good advice good advice yeah. um or you can just take your marriage certificate to do it i think i sent one client to do that one time and it worked Depending on where you are, some some of them DMV place your door business, so it depends. Right, because when I tried changing mine, um, with my I, I sent in my marriage license and I tried to change it at the social security office and they said they couldn't. They said they, yeah. <laughs> so the court maybe I forgot to go to court route. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How somebody? Oh, Can you submit a citizenship it? application a year a year before the five year wait time? Why would you not just wait the five years? You're almost there. Relax, girl. Almost time. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can submit it. You can submit it up to six months before the the, the five year mark. But you're not rush the thing because you don't want to pay all that money and then you're going there and then until it's your file too early or reject your application because of that. Just wait for the time. And remember always that you can always check these things online. They have an early filing calculator for the I seven five one which is the removal of conditions and for the naturalization application as well. Um, my friend in the USA and our boyfriend in Jamaica, but he applied for the tourism visa. Can he stay in the USA? Okay, he applied for the tourist visa. If he obtains so the, the apply visa. Apply for the B1 or B2 visa. Yeah, so if, if, I'm apply, if he gets it, and he gets to travel to the U.S. Once he's here, he can change his non-immigrant intent <laughs> and adjust that way. Mm -hmm. Can I petition for my husband here and my mother back home? I think we answered this already. Yeah, we answered that one there already. Um, what if you are not a citizen and you are just a resident? Can you do a 90-day fiancé marriage? How long have you been a resident? Because many one come from this life from this, you know? Jamaican people stop sitting down with the permanent resident card. Don't sit down with the permanent resident card. If you are eligible for citizenship, file the citizenship. Hold on. How long do you suggest to wait until I'm um, filing for the citizenship? As soon as you can. So mm -hmm. if you're married to somebody, the second you're eligible, which is three years after, file for your citizenship. The thing is, your your permanent resident card only allows you to live and work here. You have to be here for a certain amount of time. You can't spend too much days out of the country. If you commit a crime or get um caught in yeah, that's for everything. Mm -hmm. I eat that for you, babes. Well, not eat that if you contact me, of course. There may be <laughs> options for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why she's here, guys. <laughs> but um, just yeah. So if you're married, three years and. The regular time is five years, but just file it. If not, no, you have to be a citizen to do that one. Okay, so somebody asked, how long is the process of trying to file for your partner from Jamaica? Do we have to be married? Wait, hold on. I was reading an email, girl. What you said? <laughs> how long is the process of trying to file for your partner from Jamaica? Do we have to be married? Well, yes. I think we talked about this before as well. You can do a fiancé petition if you're a citizen, right? Um, that one's super short to get the person to come here. But if you're doing it as their spouse, it's going to take about a year from start to finish. Okay, I'm just checking. Cases being actively reviewed for one year. Is that a problem? Absolutely. Depending on what your preference category is and if it's beyond the normal processing times, you might want to contact somebody to get that taken care of. That's literally all I've been doing for the last six months. 
is trying to get people out of the active review because they're not actively reviewing nothing. They're not doing nothing. Yeah. How long does it take for a child under 21 filing to come through if the child is in the U.S.? When did you file it? I hope you filed it before 18. 18. Yeah, because <laughs> then that's problems. You might need a consultation for that one, man. Right. Um, how long does it take to get your social security number? Hold on one second. Sure. Um, did you forward the phone to this one? To this? Oh, it's still back. Okay. Um, how long does it take to get your social security number? Okay. Now you can actually request a social security Thank you, card. Daniela. Oh. <laughs> you can actually request the social security card um on your adjustment application now as well as in your i4 in your 765 which is your ead your employment authorization document so you can you can apply for it so you get it almost right after you get the green card nakita mullins hey cousin (laughs) one thing about my family them going to show up which is right um can my husband get a visitor's visa if i am pregnant and also high risk my doctor gave me a letter uh, I mean, that could, could be good evidence for you, for them to show that he needs to visit, yes, but um, it's still not guaranteed if you're filing for him especially, you know, because they might assume that he's coming to stay. If I marry someone on DACA, how long, does, how long is the process? Process for what? That's a, that's a complex question. You can have DACA if you have a lawful entry or not, so that might be a more complicated question. I need more information than that to answer that one. How long does it take you to get your permanent resident card when married? Okay, from the date of filing, I'm assuming you're asking, depending on um how it's all in how you prepare the package. So let's say if it is a concurrently filed I-130 and the 485, if you file everything one time, um, in my practice, it takes my clients between four to six months to get theirs done. But that's because I'm a crazy person and I submit a lot of evidence with all of my packages. So um, it could be that fast, but the processing time <laughs> is um, supposed to be right now eight months, eight to 12 months. And they are taking that long from what I'm hearing. It's taking a while. How long before you marry a U.S. citizen should you put in the paperwork? What do you mean well, before? You got to do it after. After, babe. yes. <laughs> Maybe that meant after. How long after you marry yeah. a U.S. citizen should you put in the paperwork? Um... So the different practitioners have different opinions on this. I say if you can prove uh, that it's a bona fide relationship, the day that you get married, you can put the papers in. But it all depends on what evidence you have available to you. What I what I do in my practice is I actually have a lot of couples hire me before they even get married. Once they know they're going to marry the person and they're like making plans to move in together, to live together and stuff like that. Um, you can actually start preparing the evidence before you even get married. If you follow me, you'll see that I did a video on that last week. Go take a look. <laughs> do you take J1 intern cases that have the waiver? I do. Just so you know, J1s are... Trim, are you hiring? You see, I know shy somebody while you work. <laughs> if nobody I get I am me, I get I am. Hello? You're all tired. Yeah. Right, <laughs> Set up a satellite office of a grace. What do you mean? Right, I'm I'm the remote. Um, Carly, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, well, you did you did answer the question about uh, J one. Yeah, I do. I do take those cases. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and email her. You can tell them your email so they can email her right now, right away. <laughs> Info at hemanslaw dot com. I n f o at h e m a n s l a w dot com. What did you study in university to get in this field? Oh, I love these kinds of questions. I have a mentorship business as well. It's not really a business. It's a program because I don't charge for advising people to go to law school. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sign up at legallytrim.com. Uh, so I did a little unconventional way of going to law school. Um, my mom didn't have all of the monies that it would need to have a big brain pitney like me. So what I did... <laughs> I went to community college first. I got a two-year degree in legal assisting. Then I went and got my... I actually got two associate's degrees. That's why they were all full of business. So, um, two associate's degrees. Then I got my bachelor's degree. Uh, it took me two years from Nova Southeastern University. Then I went to law school. So mine was a little bit windy, but the usual way is to get a bachelor's degree 
and then a US bachelor's degree and then go to um an accredited law school. Um when you get married, do you get a work visa? When you get married and file your adjustment of status, if you are here, you are also entitled to apply for a work permit. Um, right, that's a work is... a permit, not a work visa. And then you right. get the social security. Right, number. right. But nowadays, those are going very slow. I have Most of my green card cases are getting approved before they even get the work permit. So there's also that. Mm. <laughs> is it better to file the I-130 online? No. Do not do online applications. It is a misconception that those go faster. They do not. It is easier for you to make mistakes that way. Mm. Uno, uno need to realize that USCIS is not trying to help you, you know, to make it seem like, yeah, girl, do this. It's faster. It'll be better. It is not. When it's, it's not. As long right. as, yeah, as long as they're printing them on paper, I still think you should do it on paper. How about if you came on a B1 and overstayed? Okay, um, you shouldn't do that, is what I would say, but <laughs> unless you have a plan, unless you have a plan, but um, I hope you have a plan in place that could help you get out of that situation, but uh, that's a removable offense, so you could get put in immigration court if that's what you're asking. Yeah, you could get in trouble for doing that. What is your input on the notes on travel documents? The note on travel documents. What note? <laughs> <laughs> we need a little more than that. And the thing is, like, guys, what you have to understand, you have to be a little more specific in what you're asking. That could mean five different things right now. Right. Are you asking the about what the real ID saying? issue with being able to travel state to state? Like, what, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you take waiver cases for J1? I think we answered that already. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do. My mom is a U.S. citizen. I have a U.S. Per passport, but not naturalized, and she refused to give me the papers. Uh, you oh. have a, if you have a U.S. passport, you might be able to request your own citizenship um, certificate. You don't need that from her. Call me. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So book in, <laughs> book in. <Yep. laughs> Let's talk about it. Case of being actively reviewed one year problem. I think you answered that one already, yes. Yeah, sue them, right. sue them. There's something called a writ of mandamus. Hire a lawyer and sue them to force them to make a decision. That's what we do. Oh, how long is the 90 visa process if they come to the USA illegally? So if they reach a foreign illegally, what am I about to get um, 90 day visa for? Listen, if someone come here illegally, do not file adjustment for them. You are putting them on USCIS radar and they will be put in immigration proceedings. Make sure you check the eligibility of these things. Everybody doesn't get to file the same forms. There's a reason that people like me exist. This is a very complicated part of the law and you need to make sure that you are eligible for things before you file for it. I am never going to tell you that you should always hire the attorney because I understand that everybody have the monies. I had to do my paperwork by myself when I, was, when I got married. But you know what I did? I Googled somebody, went into the little man's office, paid him little hundred dollars, and asked him every question under the sun. And then I went and filed by myself. In hindsight, I would have just hired him to do it because once I realized the risk of what could have happened. But just make sure you, you know that you're eligible for things before you just file for it. It's way more than just forms. The forms are like 30% of what your entire case is about. Hmm. How soon can I change my name? Change from my maiden name? As soon as as soon as I get married, I can do that, you know. Just file it with the court. Request for name change. For legal name change. <laughs> what is my Oh god. Uh, can I apply for a fiance visa if I'm already married? Next question, because we don't know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. In some cultures, yes, polygamy is allowed. That the U.S. immigration law does not. I'm gonna stop laughing at the comments so we can't talk straight, man. <laughs> U.S. immigration law does not <laughs> recognize polygamy, so you will not be able to file another petition while you are still married to someone else. All right. Did an interview from September last year and nothing yet. Inquiry. Do the online inquiry. Or you can write them a letter or you can call um, 
USCIS to find out where the case isn't moving. How long does it take to get the green card after marriage? Uh, six to eight months after you file it. All right, wait, let me see now. Or it should be. I don't know right now with processing times. COVID mash up everything, guys. What we can do is give you estimates. And get one of them bad liars if you speed up your kiss. Per. Yeah. All right, somebody asked a question. Mr. this question like three times. If you lose your green card, what form to file to renew it? You can file an I-90 form for it, okay? And what I will also advise you guys to always keep copies of your documents. Take a picture of your green card and send it to your email. That way, G Google keep everything. Just email it to yourself so you always have a copy of it, okay? Because the I-90s, those take over a year to come through. All right, wait, let me see which form I did. Come here, first, scroll back up. No, man. Next meeting is at 1.30, right? Listen, guys, if I miss out the question... I no, kill me. Right, just remember, I will have a question I come in one time. Jesus. Yeah. My mom went to renew her visa after 20 years of not traveling and was told she's permanently blocked. Oh. Well, she may have done something on the while she was here on her last visa that took to file right. that, or um, she committed some offense in the U.S. that would prevent her from coming back. So there's definitely more to that story. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, my mom waiting for interview since last year. Nothing yet. Interview for what, my love? Is that a natural question? Green card. What type of interview? Yeah, what, what, what are we doing? All right. My friend just got married. How soon can she file for her green card and also her son back in Jamaica? As soon as she's able to provide provide the bona fide evidence that right. you guys are actually in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Can you cancel a green card if your partner starts giving problems as soon as she reaches? Oh, yes, no, yes, Robert. Robert. Not Robert. <laughs> Robert, really? Cheyenne, husband named Robert. Cheyenne in the background like, what do you Robert, just Sorry, Robert. Just Unfortunately, this, this does happen a lot where, you know, people use people. This <laughs> money said, geez, I'm Robert. <laughs> people come here, come use people for um for paperwork. Unfortunately, there, there really isn't much you can do. Um, if it's already um approved, there's not much you can do once it's been approved. If it's still pending, you can withdraw the application. But no need to be spiteful, Robert. I just say, go. Oh, How long is how long? I'm going to answer this already, you know. How long is the 90 um day visa process? <laughs> My sister Robert, come go. <laughs> okay, so the fiance visa um that that petition takes a lot. It's a lot faster than um doing the immigrant visa process, right? Because what you're really asking for is that the person just come in here so they can get married in 90 days. The thing is, you have to realize that that carries its own requirements. So you have to go through that pretty carefully to make sure that you don't delay the case past the three to six months that it usually takes for it to go through. All right. What's um, your She's like, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> really good info. Thanks, Her Highness. Um, is it safe to travel to use the travel document to go back to your country while you wait? If it is an emergency. That's not something for you to abuse and use at your discretion. So no sense part of traveling. Pandemic yeah, we're not going to travel document. Fish. Wait, man. No. It has to be serious. Life just pandemic. wait, man. Just wait. Yeah. If, unless no. it's an emergency, just wait for your stuff to come through. Because what you don't realize is, by law, once you leave the U.S. while an adjustment of status is pending, you are, it is deemed abandoned, and then what are that money gone did? And if you have overstayed, remember that that's a violation of your visa now, and you could be blocked depending on how long you've been in the country. So let's say you've been you overstayed for more than a year, you run off your over, and it's been over a year. You are barred for ten years from coming back here. So why you want chance that unless somebody your mother did, and you have to you go? That's right, sir. Sit down. Wait. All right. I'm almost married. Yes, I'm married almost. Almost, almost married, I mean. I'm almost married, but I haven't started putting in my paperwork as it is. Is that a problem? If you're almost married, you don't have no paperwork to put in. To put in. <laughs> so. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But make sure I'm answering. Can I share a lie? I don't know my face. Yeah. <laughs>
Make sure I'm answer that one then. <laughs> Which one? Well, well, no, you were right. Absolutely correct. Yes, again, Grace cannot give. Stop going in Grace's DMs to ask her legal question, and I try to get my girl in a problem. She's not right. a licensed attorney. She cannot give you legal advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my dad filed for five of his children. All went for interview except me. I don't know why I'm the eldest. Twenty three. So why you never go good day? <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's let's unpack this though. What wrong with her for real? She get really spicy in the last five minutes, Miss Grace. I walk one. <laughs> Grace is tired of y'all, but let me answer the question. So um, a variety of things could be the difference, right? So I have a client where her younger sister is almost done with her process and she don't understand why hers don't come through it because hers was filed first. The difference is this. The little sister is unmarried and has no children. The big sister is married and has two children. It's going to take a long, long time, babes. Right, I'm the going to baggage. Exactly. The person with the least baggage, I them come first. Unless you're right. a sibling. Somebody say I have a video of that on your page. I do. <laughs> Thanks for following. You know what? Well, we should have what? But I'll probably one question I will answer from before. What form do you need to renew a green card? I ninety. How long is the sibling to sibling process? I'm a citizen. We answered that already. Um Seven to 14 years, long, long time, girl. Just put in the paperwork. It's going to take about 14 years. What if I met my GF online and online what? that's in the army and we got married online? Is that a problem to file for? Now, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before. Get in the, and that means you listen to my face. <laughs> You'd have to look at the laws of the state that you guys live in. Right, like, do they? Would they? Um, yeah, the the state that you're gonna be filing in. Can members are then with online, so then they live in another state. So, yeah. <laughs> well, she she lives in a state, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, and she's the applicant. So even though he's the petitioner, she's still the applicant. So wherever his mail coming to, because he's only deployed, I'm assuming, he have to live somewhere, right? So you have to check the laws of that state when it comes to the marriage laws, because. If they don't recognize that kind of marriage, which I don't think they would probably, uh, then you wouldn't be able to file based on that. No matter if you don't have the ceremony, babes, when him come home. That's interesting, though. Yeah, first met your brother on it. You do divorce as well? I do not, but I have a great referral. Me candy with my family problem. I stress and great ear that. But all the best. <laughs> um, <after> <laughs> After submitting your petition, do you get a working permit before your green card? You are supposed to be given one that. if you filed for it. But as we said, um, what we're seeing now, consultations are $100. What we're seeing now is that... <laughs> <laughs> what we're seeing now is that um, green cards are getting actually processed before they even send you the work permit. So there's also that. Yeah. How it long take does eight it months take? now for, for process a, a work permit. It's crazy. I don't mean to say. It's crazy. How, how long does it take to get residency after you marry a military spouse? Same as everybody else. The only thing that's faster for military people is citizenship. How much that be? How much that you got to share? Uh -huh. Chama, are you iron? Hi. People don't want your word. Working on my ear, yeah. <laughs> Why taking so long for renewal of green card to receive the new card? I, I wish I could tell Wait, you. Wait, tell me Jesus. Oh, what? He put me back on the bus. No. <laughs> All right. Did you attend? Saint, question, did I attend okay. St. Hilda's? Yes, I did. Did not have a good time there, but it was a very good school. Yeah. Well, I like I said about my God. God, form girl. Would, just going to the comments. What form would you need? What form would you need to renew the permanent residence? I ninety. I'm married almost a year now, but I haven't started putting in my paperwork. That won't be an what? issue. No, but why? If you're in yeah, lawful why status, we, why then I assume long? that it's not a problem. But if you're not in lawful status, contact an attorney as soon as possible and get... No, come here, Shay. Contact the B and Papi. Part-time only. I'm good, with... <laughs> I'm good with filling out paperwork. I've been doing this for family. <laughs> the people don't want your work, girl. <laughs> no work done to you, but you Hi, Miss Hi. Hi, Shai. Thank you very much. 
I go to my use your that video, you know. I love my girl, man. Love my girl. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, how long? Uh, somebody I... asked something that I want to answer. Can, oh, okay. can an asylee travel with travel documents? Here's the thing about asylum, right? When you get the asylum, when you tell the people them that you're scared to go back to your country, you're in fear you of your life. Exactly. Where you have to go back at the place for? Go back after you become a citizen, right? Because they're going to ask those questions. When you go for your citizenship now, they're going to be like, I thought you were scared to go back to this country. So how have you been going back 10, 20, 15 times since you get your green card? Careful, careful. Think about it. Why do, why do prisoners say you put uh, milk and you put smart? <laughs> You put your, then just a tease you with that travel document. Then just a tease they are, you. They you're are. ever, you're ever bored. Because mm. you're not supposed to travel. You're, you're not supposed to. Long. You're scared to travel. Why would you travel? Yeah. To that country. You can travel somewhere else. Yeah, but... travel somewhere else. Why not travel yeah. back to that country then? Yeah. It doesn't make no sense. But yes, you can. But okay. You can, but at your own risk. Don't bother to me. But right to God. God. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Sorry. If you're a green card holder and have a 14 year old child here, can I file for her without she go? If, if the person is in status, so if the child is still in lawful status, then yes, you can file for them to adjust. If not, they have to go. And stop bringing the children here and make the people, depending on them, um, go out of status. Right. Why you not do that? No, that's not the best way of doing things unless you have a plan for you and your child. Do not because once they get to eighteen, they will find themselves in a other problem, and if they go find themselves after you make serious life decisions at the age of eighteen. Okay, mm -hmm. so think that through. I understand that um in certain cases that might not be optional, like there's not a carve out for domestic victims of domestic violence, and so y'all might be running through your lives. I do understand that. But if don't, don't just get up one day and just carry the picnic on my mash up them visa. Don't do that unless you have to. Chem, somebody asking where are you located? I am located in Fort Lauderdale, but I represent clients in all 50 states and around the world. We do virtual consultations and I love traveling for cases. So call me. All right. My dad passed. Oh, wait. Me see me read. Oh, okay. Me know we do a while again. Didn't reload the comments. All right. Um, the travel document states entry back in the USA is not guaranteed. Is it safe to travel? Wait, what was that? <laughs> the travel document states entry back in the USA is not guaranteed. It's safe to travel. Exactly. That's why I've been harping on the last few minutes. Do not travel on it unless you have to. You're not guaranteed re-entry. Right. If it's if it's state that I mean. I, think that's kind of of I have to go right. in like two minutes. So let's take two more questions and then I have to go. And guys, you can go ahead and follow Trem and follow me if you yes. want more of these lives. <laughs> you let us know. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a little weekly thing. I don't know. But book your consultation. Trem, give your email address and your contact information. Okay. Yeah, uh, contact so info, call all the questions that have not been answered, you can go ahead and email them to her. She's going to give you her email address right now. Sure. Okay. Email address, email info at hemanslaw.com. That's I-N-F-O at H-E-M-A-N-S-L-A-W.com. Or you can go to hemanslaw.com, go to the contact page and send us your, um, your information so we can send you the info for our consultation. You can also call us at 754-301. 8744. We also have a WhatsApp number if you are in Jamaica. The WhatsApp number is 954 270 6240. Sorry, let me just get it. Never read it. Um, <laughs> follow me at Legally Trim. I am everywhere as Legally Trim Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everybody. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks for doing with this, this with me, Gracie. You're welcome. I so enjoyed this live. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Bye uh, guys. Another question still. So um <laughs> you still want to answer someone till twelve thirty or you want to cut off? I I literally have a meeting at twelve thirty, so I gotta go. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> bye guys. Thank you for joining. Remember to Bye everybody. Yeah. <laughs> bye.